after one, it is 12.30 in the morning, and Jackson found himself in a hotel room with a bunch of drunken bikers, all of them in good mood, probably feeling a little better than they should. They have all been friends for a long time. He met Ryan Henry when he'd been in boot camp, the rest he met over the years in the army. Every year now, they have tried to get together for a motorcycle ride through New England. It's way for them to get out the stretcher's wings. We count each other, drink a lot of beer, and get into fights. They, then everyone went back to their real lives. Some very successful, some moderately so, some married, some divorced, and some were kids. <coughs> but the ride was a great equaliser. They left everything behind but the brotherhood that they shared. His camaraderie among men been enough for Jackson for the last ten years. He had no serious relationships with women. He hadn't wanted to. He was ne- he, enough to have fun and hurt no one. But he realised that he took another pull off. He beer. This was enough for him anymore. He wanted a home. He wanted to be. He wanted to be home. The night when he slept, he dreamed of her. The scent, the fill of the skin, the gentle brush of her hair. He haunted him. The next morning, everyone was getting ready to leave. It was headed to head home. Their families and they realised. For the first time, Jackson felt he had a true destination, a place to go. He felt there would be more for him at the end of his journey than the empty house that awaited him. Long hours of work, he used the reason to be alone. He knew where home was and who he was with. He also knew he wanted to be he wouldn't be welcomed with open arms. The life he wanted was out there. If he wanted it and her, he'd have to work for it. Present day, Jason Vance Jackson Vance stood outside the inn at Echo, like looking up at the builder's eye. The builder's eye. A strong, beautiful structure of stone and brick, solely built to stand the test of time. Balconies protecting, projecting from the second and third stories gave a romantic look. He told himself that he just wanted to soak up the ambience for a moment, but in reality, he put off the meeting with Laurel for a few more minutes. He'd been back to Echo Lake Village for a year, and then he'd seen Laurel for a few times. Each time he'd seen a cold coin or two and a cold shoulder, he wasn't affected with warm reception. He hoped for one. As he made his decision to come home to Echo Village, he looked into investigating, investing his home down. He bought property and became a silent partner in a local construction company. He had made the decision to come home and he was building a life in a town that he had left so long ago. He had his fill of seeing the world where once his small town seemed like a trap, now seemed like a refuge. Echo Village was a good small spot on the mountains. The good still happened. Happiness could be found. This small part of Green Mountain State was where he wanted to spend the rest of his days. He wanted to spend them with Laurel, the woman they'd left behind ten years ago. He took in a deep breath. He might as well just get the meeting over with. If it was going to get any, 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 uh, easier, just because he stood out there. It wasn't, till, it wasn't the first time that he'd been, uh, seen her when he'd been back. Hell, he'd been back a year. It was just going to be the first time that she was going to spend time with him. Whether he wanted or not, and Laurel was the kind of woman to be to take being pushed into something very well. He strode in the front foyer. He remained, remembered a time he known every expression of Laurel's face, every tone and inflection of her voice. Once she would have rushed to meet him, beautiful hair flying behind her, her grey eyes alight with a simple joy of seeing him. Those days were long over. He ended them when he joined the army ten years ago. He, in fact, had Zach sold himself along in the town, but he was here to stay. Everyone would have to get used to the idea. In time, he had gone. Laura had changed from a sweet girl to a strong head businesswoman. No surprise here. Laura had always had a head of a business and eye for bottom line. He had used what, that to get his job remodeling the lobby or the inn. He hoped to wield her his way. Whittled his way back into life. Now she was reshubbing herself in the community. He stepped through the inner door. People in the lobby turned and took notice. It's difficult not to. He was a tall man, six foot three, with broad shoulders, a lean build. He carried himself like a man. He used to be in a uniform, confident and sure of himself. Dark jeans and polo shirt he wore today. He even as never let backpack carry over one shoulder. Jackson carried himself with an air of command. 
was an unmistakable unitary. A breeze that ruffled his hair that just swept past his collar framing. A lean face with well defined cheekbones and a surprisingly full mouth. His eyes looked keen and scared the lobby, taking in the structure, the beams and the sofas. A sweeping staircase he once again admired, that Laurel had done with an old building, turning with once been a neglected old hotel to a beautiful and very credible enterprise.